Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Gossi Talk Show, um, where our coaches can help you get more from your life and create concrete steps to help you get there. My name is Nomsa Clara Mnobe. I'm the founder of Hope Spring Eternal Introduction Agency and the founder of Gossi Talk Show. So I have four experts with me. Um, I'm going to let our experts introduce themselves. Also, they can lay out their professional credentials expertise. And Nadia, please introduce yourself. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Nadia Dubiel. I am body intelligence coach, and I have my own uh, academy, Superhuman Academy, where I teach people uh, basically how to be themselves, how to, how to learn about the dark side, how to learn about the a higher self and how to reconnect with, with our heart and, and become who we truly are because we live in a world full of illusions and information that's very confusing and we actually never go within and learn uh, and listen to ourselves to, to you know to create life that we truly want we just follow others copy others so yeah my school is all about learning uh, what do you want and, and what is our full potential thanks thank you so much nadia over to you d please introduce yourself to our audience. Hi, my name is Dee French and I am a leadership mentor and a business growth strategist. And my program is called Speak Right Sell. And I help people use their one message and turn it into a full article, a keynote speech, um, a coaching program, and then turn it into a book. Because I believe that you can use your message to immortalize yourself with your words that you can leave a legacy for someone else to be able to know that you was here on this earth, that they can be impacted, you can have influence, and you can increase your income. Thank you so much, Dee. Over to you, Dee, and introduce yourself to our audience, please. Thank you so much, Nosa. Hey, I'm Divian. I, uh, I help uh, digital course creators to design, market, and sell high-ticket offers. And uh, my unique selling point, the thing that is different about me, is I help you to really overcome them fears, overcome them challenges that you face in selling your high-ticket offer and uh, that is in your heart and in your head. And um, I enable you to like, create an environment where you can really dig deep, uh, overcome them fears, and start to actually earn the amount of money that you deserve to earn. Thank you so much. I have to give you credit. I typed the topic on uh, on Google search. You came on top with the topic on your website. I like what you've done on the website. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much. Over to you, Roger. Please introduce yourself to our audience. Hi, Norm, sir. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me back. I'm Roger Cheatham, founder of Transformational Resilience. And I help people to keep going through the difficult times when giving up could be so easy to bounce back from the hard times and to spring forward to the great times ahead. That is done by basing it upon my own personal journey of going from being attempted murder victim to attempted murder survivor and now proudly and uniquely describing myself as an attempted murder thriver. And I help people by converting that into keynote speeches to coaching on group and individual basis and also by delivering bespoke workshops around the subject as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Our topic today is how to spring forward from your biggest adversities, which is part two. We've done part one and you guys really enjoyed it. So you wanted more. So that's why we are here today. So what are the negative, what, why negative experiences are necessary in our development day, please? Well, you know, I, I look at it like this. Um, a lot of times from, even from childhood, we would go through negative experiences. And sometimes we were never really taught how to function or handle those experiences. So those experiences would carry over into our adulthood because we never knew how to handle it. So now that we're an adult and we have a negative experiences, sometimes we don't develop properly because we never developed correctly when we was younger. 
So for me, negative experiences is really important because it lets you know what you can take, what you can allow. You know, how, how will you be able to, to handle if you don't even know it, you can, you can do it. So if so, say like for me, when I had a death of my dad, no one really sat down and went over the process of death. So when I went through death of my dad, it really destroyed me. It, you know, I went through depression. I went through all the, because no one really was teaching the process that it's okay to grieve. It's okay to, you know, have a period of mourning. So there's a process that we have to go through. So the negative experiences, it helps you develop because if you don't develop, you stay in a cycle where you don't want to be in. You know, a cycle of unhappiness, a cycle of depression, a cycle of uh, lack. So those those development process is needed because how are you going to learn? Because life is a learning experience. Every day we're learning. Every day we're developing. So we're developing every day that we learn something new. That we could just just like if you're trying to create a business. When you try that business, you may have a failed um, uh, a failed project. But that doesn't mean that you failed. It just means that you just something you tried didn't work. So that experience will allow you to learn and develop your craft. Just as in your personal life, you have to be able to develop it. So that's every day we need to develop. So the, the experiences are needed. It's needed. Thank you so much, Dee. Sometimes you have to lose everything to gain everything in life. Thank you so much for all these powerful words we we don't get taught when you know when we are growing up is something that we have to learn it's a process when yeah. you say when you lost your dad and uh, no one uh gave you the steps or the process i went through the same thing as well and i thought actually i have to be strong but that's not the case i didn't allow myself to grieve properly right until I actually realized that actually I need to allow my feelings to appear and embrace them and just eliminate the feelings that I don't want in my life. So thank you so much. And um, I'm gonna come over to you, Nadia. What is your take on this one? Yeah, it's it's uh, negative experiences are so important. Yeah, exactly. You know what exactly what they said, and. Um, you know, we live in, in a society where no one is, is everyone is denying negativity, negative experiences. This is bad, this is wrong, we, this shouldn't be happening. But in, in reality, this is just part of our life. It's just life experience. And if we do not accept um, that it's okay to go through a low points, to, to, to suffer, to, to, to experience something bad, um, we will never be able to really fully accept ourselves and our life because that denial creates a, a void. It, it creates illusion basically in our, in, in our life, in our heads. And um, we never actually fully learn how to experience life. And of course, these negative experiences uh, develop resilience, they develop inner strength. We become much uh, stronger, more responsible people, we become leaders of our life. So we can uh, so we can create life that we truly desire. If we don't go through this negative experience, especially as children, overprotective parents are the worst parents probably because they, they, of course it's it's wonderful. We have to love children, and you know it's it's our natural action to protect them. But if you really like safeguard them from everything and life, as as they said, you they will never be ready when they grow up to to uh, to face the reality uh, that's why it's so important to to be there for, for your children to, to hold their hands and to as they said again to to, pro, uh, to learn them how to process the, these horrible things that are happening to us we all go through um, there's a um, this graph i forgot what was this lady name she created a curve change so every time when something tra traumatic happens to us some kind of drama problem um we um, we go through process through the same process as, as human beings. We we try to deny it. We get angry, then eventually we accept it, and then we move on. And every single person goes through this change curve after we grieve because of something happened. It, it just takes different time for different people, depending on your level of your resilience of your inner strength. So. Negative experiences are part of our life and it's okay, it's normal. And, and what they do, they make us, they create us. Uh, they create um, people who we're supposed to be so we can really 
you know, the more negative experience we have and the more we, we learn from it instead of dwelling on it and, and holding on to it and suppressing the, the emotions that we should be feeling, the more we can take on life and the greater and bigger lives we can create, the more responsibility we can handle, and the, the bigger impact we can make in the world. A lot of people live in their heads and, and basically complain about elites, rich people, but they never actually consider how much responsibility it is to, you know, to have a lot of money, to, to be rest because this, these people that have a lot of money, they, they are responsible for thousands of people's lives, jobs. And to, to become that person, you really have to have that resilience. You have to have that inner strength and, and, and have balls basically, you know, to, to run all this, to have that, that high responsibility. So if, if you are a person who is running away from and is afraid to, to, uh, to face reality, you will actually never become successful in life. And, uh, you know, you will never be able to, uh, to accept yourself and other people and, and liberate yourself, uh, basically, and find that inner peace. So negative experiences are incredibly important and should never, ever run away from them, but learn how to process it in a very functional and low way so yeah that's my take on it thank you so much nadia i'm just gonna learn to process the negative experience and i'm not gonna run bring it on uh davian please um what is your take on this one thanks um i love i love what everyone said so far uh, just to begin with i was sitting there thinking um to the question you asked was why are ne negative experiences necessary in our development and what i was sitting there thinking is what actually is a negative experience? Like, like that word negative. The reality is, when you think about it, negative is just a label that we put on an experience to categorize it, put it in a box, and then we put a meaning on that box and go, oh, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be there. We shouldn't be in this place because that's what the world has told us. We shouldn't be experiencing what we have now labeled negative experiences. And so actually the reality is um, they're incredibly important, but... I think the first thing to really look at is, is why do, we don't need to call them negative experiences. We could just call them experiences, right? Because they're just, that's all they are. They're experiences. They're not negative or positive. We label them as that based on our definition of what everybody else tells us to do. And they're just experiences. And so the reality is if I called something a positive experience, you wouldn't shy away from it. You'd just go towards it, right? You'd be like, oh, it's a positive experience. So I'll go towards it. But if it's a negative experience, we want to run away from it. And that's the tendency, right? Imagine if we just cross the two over, right? We swap them over. A right childbirth, we swap them over and we called all the negative experiences positive ones, all the ne positive ones, negative ones. We would grow up totally different. We'd be completely different people, right? And, and we would look at the world in a different way. So um, I think we need to have experiences like let's not label them and i think that's the that's the and i really like what nadia said about you know when we're kids and i know i experience this my parents absolutely love me to the extent that i never like until i don't know i was like 14 years old i never got to a counter and or ask someone in their shop for something i needed i'd always ask the parents to ask them because i'd be scared of asking them because i'd never done it before um and and so there was all this fear that was built up so really it's a level, it's necessary to have experiences and it's necessary to uh, allow yourself to experience what you might label as negative. And when you go through it, you'll kind of see that it's not negative. There may be pain attached to the experience. For example, some uh, couple of you just mentioned that you're, you're, uh, you have parents pass away and there's pain associated with that. But it's not, you know, of course we don't want a parent to pass away of course we don't want to lose money we don't want to do these things but they're not negative experiences they're just experiences right they, they just happen and we label them so it's necessary because for us to come to a level of acceptance of who we actually are which once we get to that level of acceptance or we get closer to that level of acceptance it no longer becomes a positive or negative experience it becomes an experience and that's the important bit i think it's necessary to understand that because we're here to learn, we're here to learn, right? We're here to learn to be happy. And there are some fundamental principles of being happy. 
Um, and one of them is that if you want to be more happier, you've got to face things that you find challenging and overcome them. Every single person who's ever been happy in this life have, have, have overcome experiences that they found challenging. Um, and they maybe now they would see them, what they would have labeled as negative, as neutral experiences. They might not label them as positive, but they might just be, it's an experience, right? Um, a really great way someone described this to me once is, let's say somebody right now crashed into somebody else's car somewhere in, somewhere in the world. Do I have a reaction to that? And the thing is, I don't. It's an event that's happened, but I haven't chosen to react to it. If someone was to bump into me, would I have a reaction? Well, it depends what's happening in that day and what I, the, it actually depends on the predefined um, judgment that I have of that scenario or of that person based on my experiences that define how I then react. So I think it's critically important that we have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of experiences. And the more we have and the quicker we have them, the more we can know who we really are and the, the less we will get phased by it. We're still going to feel the pain or the, we might even still feel the fear come up, but we can just walk through it and be like, okay, cool. There's all this stuff happening around me and it's, and it's not fun, but we can just keep moving forwards. And I think that's the key is, if you are, if you become stationary, well, everything else is moving. So if you become stationary, you're actually relatively going backwards. Whereas if you're, if you are able to continue stepping forward, even if it's really slow, it's still progress. And I think that's the important bit is if you want to really find happiness, you've got to, you've really got to be able to continue walking through every single experience. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Devian. It is necessary to go through all these uh, experience in life so you can, you can learn from them and rewrite your own story. Thank you so much. Uh, Roger, what's your intake on this one? Yeah, I'd first of all like to build on what Divian just shared there about how we perceive something as to whether it is a negative experience or not. I think that is very much a matter of perspective and a bit of a, a light-hearted one to share with you. I recently heard a fellow international speaker say that we all, we all have a negative connotation at the moment of the term lockdown. Everyone's fed up of hearing it, everyone sees it as being a negative, and he, tongue-in-cheek, suggested that had we called it the 21-day stay-at-home Facebook challenge, that people would have suddenly seen that as a positive and would have embraced it a lot more. I think that's a, an interesting take on to what I'm about to come on to, on the, that I believe reframing is very much an important technique within resilience. So rather than perceiving it as negative or positive, it's indeed, as I said, a matter of perspective. I believe the, um, the importance of the said negative experience is that it is all part of our learning curve as I think we would all agree that the best form of learning is doing if you try something it works you do it again it doesn't you look at what didn't work and move forward doing it in a, a different way that's how we grow and as the saying goes a bit like with a flower in the garden if we're not growing we're dying and I believe that brings me on to the difference in experience and wisdom. If I was to step off camera now, fall down a step, then experience would tell me to be a little bit more careful next time I went out of the door because there's a step there. If you were following me out of the door, wisdom would tell you not to fall down the step as you would learn from having seen it me experience it without having to experience that yourself so I think the experience of wisdom also comes from our negative experience which brings me on to my final point which is reflection and it is that reflecting and looking back see what worked well so we can build upon it seeing what didn't work quite so well so we can either find an alternative way or make a slight amendment to make sure that when we're in that situation again it's more successful moving forward. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Roger. <laughs> That was that was really really powerful from you guys, powerful from you guys. And um, I'm gonna come over to you, uh, Dee. How to become strong and resilient person? How can we become strong and a resilient person? Is there any steps we can use, or is there anything that we can use? Yeah, um, to become a resilient person, most. Um, we have to really look, look at ourselves and say, okay, res, uh, someone that is resilient will be able to bounce back. They will use their uh, problems or their negative experiences, even the positive ones, and they'll learn from it. They'll learn from it because they know that they have that inner resilience to move on, to move forward. They don't want to stay stuck or stay in a cycle. So I would say one step would be to stop your negative cycles, negative thoughts. You know, let's identify where they are, where they're coming from, and let's move through them so that you can stop the cycle of going on through that negative process, that you can move it into a, a greater experience. So I, that's one thing I would say, to just look at, you know, where the thoughts are coming from and how to actually move forward from those. And the next thing I would say um, for me, it was the, the deep breathing. My deep breathing, it allowed me to be able to be clear, to have some clear thinking, to have clear in my, in my lungs. So it allowed me to take a time to meditate, to allow me to be able to see what's important is what I'm, what I'm thinking right now. Is it my thinking or is it something that I might've picked up, that I might've felt from, the, from, the, from someone else? So my meditation allowed me to be able to have some quiet time where I'm able to see what I want to do and what I really mean, what I really need to do to move forward to be successful. And then on top of that, you want to start asking some important questions. Ask yourself some questions. When these thoughts come to your mind, ask yourself some questions. Um, is it a thought that I really want to continue? Will this thought help me go on my path? Or is it just a negative thought? Or is it a thought that I, that's going to allow me to um, move to the next level. Think about it. Sit down and write down your stuff. That's why I'm, I'm a believer of writing. Write your thoughts down. Put them on paper. Let's dissect them. Let's see, is this something that's really going to help me? And if it's not, let's get rid of it. And then let's go through the steps to eliminate those thoughts. Okay? What about overcoming the failure of fear? Okay, that's the next step. How are you, is there a, a fear of failure there? And that's, how do you overcome it? Okay, let's sit and let's think. Okay, you're going, you feel like you failed in a situation. Okay, but maybe that failure really wasn't a failure. Maybe it was a learning experience. Like I, my divorce failed, but I don't look at it as a, as a failure. To me, I learned. So now my next relationship is going to be amazing. Why? Because I learned from that experience. So those are the steps that I would just go through, just some steps. You know, look at, look at what you've been through. Look at your life. Let's analyze your life. Analyze where you are right now and dissect it. It's okay. So sometimes we coach everywhere, everybody in the world. But as coaches, we sometimes sit and analyze your own self. Because you want to be better for your students, better for your family, and better even in business. And, and better for the world. So let's analyze you. Let's sit down. Let's see where did I fail? Where did I come short? You know, and let's analyze it and try to do some corrections in, in, in our own selves first. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dee. I like it when you say when you, your marriage failed, but you learn from that experience. You didn't blame yourself. And uh, I went through that as well. My first relationship when it failed, I had to look at the things that how I was in that relationship. And uh, instead of me blaming myself or blaming my ex, and I realized I was awful. I had no clue how yeah. to uh run the relationship and how to be in that relationship i didn't know anything mm -mm. that was the conclusion that i came at the end when i looked back i was like i was spending time like three hours getting ready to go out but in doing no medic honestly i was spending three hours wow. i'll make sure when i step outside everyone knows that i'm going out <laughs> guess what time i'm spending for getting ready one hour or 30 minutes maximum. The rest is for meditation and looking after myself. Thank you so much. Uh, what's your take on this one, Nadia? <laughs> so funny. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah. I totally resonate with what you said, Namza. <laughs> I used I used to be a per, uh, one of these people that um, even to go to like off license to get bottle of water, I would have to put makeup on <laughs> before I left my house. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous, you know. Yeah, because of the lack of resilience and inner strength, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, of, uh, when it comes to uh, how to develop resilience, I, I, I think there are like three levels uh, that, that, you know, we can, or three, um, yeah, three ways um, that we can uh, actually look uh, onto resilience. And the first one is emotional attachment and emotions. So a lot of people that lack uh, uh, emotional resilience, um, mental resilience, uh, this mental toughness, they're completely over, overrun, their lives are completely driven by emotions and they never present, they, they really uh, react <laughs> so easily and, and so um, they just get overwhelmed so easily by everything because they don't do an inner work, any inner work and they, you know, they upset, they moan, they're very negative all the time, they caught up in this negative mindset, uh, run by emotions, negative emotions especially. And then the se second way we can look at it is, is, is mental. Uh, so if we actually something happens, uh, people that are not emotionally attached to, to, to the situation, to, to experiences that happens to them, uh, they look at it from the, the, the level of, of, of the clarity and, and logical thinking and just analyzing it. Okay, this happened, to, uh, th this happened and they kind of uh, process it in a, in a very logical and analytical way and they make a judgment about the situation, they make a judgment about the person and basically they, they create a belief about certain situation. But there is a, I think there's another level we can look at the experiences um, that happens to us and, and um, from a much higher perspective and this is lo look at it from our uh, intuitive place, from a hard place. Uh, so when something uh, horrible happens to us that is hurtful and painful, uh, instead of you know reacting emotionally or just make a judgment by using our mind, we can just go into our hearts and intuitively decide uh, what to do. Uh, and basically just ask uh, your higher self, the best version of yourself, what would you do? and and would you react? Would you create a judgment? Would you create a belief which is usually negative? Or would you just uh, just move on and don't let it really affect you and, and really focus really focus on your life and, and what you want to create um, in, your, in your life, how you want to build your empire? So I think that like three levels that we can we can look at it and, and then it's, it's down to you know to, 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 to the person how they want to how they want to live their life and how they want to react. And of course, I would highly recommend to, to look at everything that happens to us from this higher perspective, from, from this intuitive, higher self uh, way, uh, where when we don't really get overwhelmed, we don't really react, we don't really create negative ex um, opinions about other people, because we have enough conflict <laughs> in the world, and um, people arguing, generations, sexes, and all of this stuff, it's, it's just crazy especially in, in lockdown, we all have different opinions because you know we, we use our minds too much, <laughs> basically, and just, just too much thinking and, and usually negative thinking as Dee as said. So if you really go into our hearts and, and look at everything that happens to us from this higher perspective, the world will change into much better and more beautiful place and we will become naturally strong because deep inside our hearts are indestruct indestructible, the fearless and we are here to create beautiful and wonderful things and that's what we'll be focusing on instead of focusing on and dwelling on on you know what this person said what happened to me and so on so this is my take on it i think developing how to develop it it's it just go into your heart and don't react or don't analyze and create opinions and ideas about things just, just follow your heart basically guys so that's yeah Thank you so much, Nadia. I just go, I, I just pray when things go wrong. I do what you what you just said. I just say, okay, what, what can I do now? I remember when uh, a few weeks ago when things were, when I was in the dark place for like one hour and I was like, what do I do now? And um, 
I text Des, he didn't reply, and then I take because he was away. Then I text his his, um, his team, and they were like, "Yeah, sure. What do you want us to do?" And I was like, "Oh, this one hour wondering what I'm gonna do." And now I'm texting people. They're like willing to get in, and they're like, "Just write an email with the instruction. Tell us what you need us to do, and then we'll do it. Uh, whatever you whatever you want us to do, we'll do it, and then you can approve it." And I was like, "Okay." I was like, wow, everything happens for a reason. You know, everything that happens in life, you just have to look within, like Nadia is saying, and just go for it. Go for the things that you know. Dark places will always appear. Anything will always appear. Just know what you want to do, where you want to go, and just keep going. So I'm gonna to I'm gonna come to you, Divi. And what is your intake on this one? How do we become strong and resilient person when things are um, tough? Because things will get tough sometimes. Things will definitely get tough. Um, I think it's good that it gets tough. Um, and I think everybody should want to go through tough experiences because it will make them a better, better person who can help the world more. I think um, there's lots of things that have been said that I really, really liked. And there's five things that I just wrote down, which I think are super important. Um, First of all, I think you need to you need to have a rock. So for me, that is God. It can be whatever you want it to be, but that that rock needs to be something that doesn't change, doesn't move, doesn't adapt. You can call it your higher self, whatever whatever works for you. You need to have something that is um, that is that is stationary, that doesn't move, that never changes, unconditional love. And the important thing that I found is people can be unconditionally loving but people are people and we make mistakes so we can't we as people can't be unconditionally loving 100 percent of the time so you've got to find a source of unconditional love however you find that that um that is uh, stationary that doesn't change doesn't move because everything else around you is always changing always moving and that creates an anchor for you to come back to when things are tough um uh, one thing that I do that helps is I have a little book of things that nice things that people have said about me. And every time someone says something nice about me, I put their name, the date, and I write in there what they've said about me. So if I'm not feeling good, I'll turn back to that book uh, because that station, that's an example of something that doesn't change. Once I've written it in, it's in the book and it doesn't change. Uh, some people might need something more than just that. Um, and I think the second thing for me is um, have ex people in your life who I would call exemplary friends, people who are really deeply want the best for you. And I mean really deeply in the sense that they'll tell you when what you're saying is a load of rubbish, you know? They will tell you when what you're, how you're looking at things is not the, not the most helpful way to look at it. Not the type of friends that just soothe you and go, oh, okay, it'll be all right, it'll be all right. Of course, we need that kind of love, but we need people who are gonna say, tell us directly when we are um, going down the wrong path. And I tell you what, I've had a lot of experience with this. People have loved me directly. And it was so freeing. It's particularly freeing for people who have grown up in an environment like me that, um, that was very, very protective when I was a kid. I was very protective. And it's very good for me to have people in my life go, this is how it is. I don't like it when people say it. It's like, oh, I don't like that but it creates the most amount of growth because it creates crystal clear clarity for you. So in my opinion, you've got to have exemplary friends who are, who are willing and able to do that for you um, when you need it done. And also be able to be the soft kind of loving when you need it as well. Um, and, and, and so that creates your environment. Them two things kind of create your environment. Environment is the biggest factor in, in you being able to change and be more resilient. I actually heard recently that uh, doctors didn't used to think that your DNA could actually change, but they've, now I don't know the science behind this because I'm not a scientist, but I have heard that certain part of your DNA can actually adapt and change based on your physical environment and who you're around, which I just find amazing. I mean, you're not going to like grow a sixth toe or anything like that, but you know, some part of your DNA can change and go and research it because I, I don't know, I'm not a scientist, I don't know the details. I think the third thing is, um, is, don't compare yourself to other people. Only compare yourself to yourself from yesterday. You could, that is like the field of death. The minute you compare to somebody else, you're on the field of death. 
there are mines everywhere and you're just like waiting to blow up. That literally that's what you're waiting for. So just compare yourself to yesterday and go, how can I be better than yesterday? Um, and the fourth thing is um, much like uh, what Nadia and Dee have uh, shared is, I think you need a source to be able to release them thoughts, feelings, emotions, ponderings and stuff. So for me, that's prayer. It could be like meditation, reflection, pondering, whatever you want to call it, however you want to do it. You need a source to be able to do that. So you can organize your thoughts because when our thoughts get jumbled up, our emotions start to rise. So for me, every single morning, wake up. The first thing I do is get out of the door, go for a walk, allow myself to process anything that I haven't processed. And sometimes it doesn't get processed in the day. I've got to do it a couple of times. And for me, that walk is, is praying. Uh, I also sit and pray or kneel and pray. But for me, I also pray while I'm walking. And you can do, do it however you want. But that's critically important because you can, one, you can organize your thoughts. That's the first step because your heart and your head actually have some linkage and work together. And then once your head is clear, if you still got that feeling, you can allow yourself to release it. You need to cry, cry. I cried the other day. My sister, I was on a, I was on a class uh, with my, my sister, the personal trainer. She does online classes. And it was the first online class I've done in two weeks because I, um, a couple of weeks ago, I dislocated my shoulder and it, it went back into place within a couple of minutes, but it hurt. And so I couldn't exercise. And she said to me very softly, she just, whilst we were on the class, she goes, just be careful with this one, Divya. And in the moment, I just really felt this, emotion come up and I, I felt really loved by her like really loved and afterwards I, I went and prayed and I cried for a good five minutes because I was like wow I'm really cared for I'm all good you know I can injure myself and we can injure ourselves physically or emotionally however you want to look at that and um, and I'm and, and still loved and I think that's really important having an outlet to be able to just release their emotions and organize them thoughts and I think the fifth and final thing I found is probably one of the most important factors, but they're all really important, is to have a, a either a long-term or an eternal, whichever word you want to use to describe it, perspective. When you make decisions, when you look at the situation, you go, well, how does this look in the long-term or eternity or how do you, you see that? And when you see it in that perspective, you go, this is tiny. And so the fear shrinks because you're like, well, well, it's small. Let's just keep moving forward. And so, so if you combine them things, and I've seen it in so many people, if you combine them things and you can just keep moving forward, you can develop that, um, that resilience that we're talking about. You can develop it by doing them things. And for me, it's really, really important that you do these things every day. Like when it's good, you got to do it and strengthen yourself. And when it's not good, you got to do it and you strengthen yourself. Because that habit of doing these things every single day without fail, that itself is an anchor back to what is true and what is real and not the fear and the mumble jumble in the head. It kind of anchors you back to go, okay, I'm back into my routine. And, and that creates some level of certainty for us just by itself, by having a routine. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I would say you can develop the resilience. Thank you so much, uh, Divian. I think I, 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 I took the one that you say, don't compare yourself with someone else. Uh, comparison is a thief of joy. And uh, that is my uh, big, 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 big uh, thing that stays within my heart that I can never compare my life with anybody's life. If I need their help, I have to ask for it because I have to understand that everyone has their own book of life no one is the same so that yes. is uh, that is very very powerful thank you so much for, for putting that to our audience outlining that comparing yourself and you are stealing your joy basically i'm gonna come to you roger what is your intake on this one yeah as, as the ladies on the call were saying i've also spent all morning doing my hair but you wouldn't have known because i've come to the call without it but <laughs> Back to the seriousness of the question about how to be a more resilient person, or as I like to say, how to live a life with more resilience. And the way I, the reason I word it in that way is that life is the four-step acronym that I use because I think 
when trying to remember what someone shared with you, if you have an acronym to remember it by, it's very helpful. So LIFE is the acronym. The first step being L, look at life through a lens of gratitude, because to bring science into this, then it's a scientifically proven fact that you're unable to feel grateful for something and feel down, depressed or anxious at the same time. And back to the question we had about negative experiences, if you look for that silver cloud in every lining, that does help you to build your resilience. Coming on to the second step, the I is imagine how you can do things differently. Resilience, contrary to what a lot of people believe, is not all about continuing banging your head against a brick wall. And I like to say, again, going back to Divian's analogy of the rock, have your goals set in rock, but your path to get there set in sand. The third point, the F, stands for find a big enough why. And one of the things during my darkest time that definitely kept going over and over and over in my head is how can I take this focus off me and put it on others? And for me, it was my wife, Claire, and then 15-year-old daughter, Tash, who was going through her school leavers exam at the time that became my biggest reason why. Beyond there, I expanded it to various schools and education institutions, to businesses, and to other organisations and institutions I could make a positive difference to. And the E standing for empathy. Share and understand the feeling and thoughts of another person, even if they don't agree with your own, even if they're not aligned with your own, at least understand why they are feeling and thinking that way. And I honestly believe if more of our world leaders applied a little more empathy, we would be so much closer to, to world peace. And I know that's becoming a bit of a, a cliche at the moment or something that sounds like it's straight from Miss Congeniality, for those of you familiar with that movie. But I do believe that empathy is that fourth step and an essential pillar of resilience. So much. Thank you so much, Roger. That was really, really, really powerful. And um, I'm going to stay with you. And I need to ask you this because I know you've been through a lot and uh, you still owe me an interview, by the way. So <laughs> I need to find out more about your story because your story is amazing how you pull through. So was resilience, Roger, always commonly used word in your vocabulary? Actually, the word no. And again, it's back to what Divian was, was saying earlier on about things being labelled. My background prior to the attempted murder on the 9th of June 2013 was that I had been in hospitality for 13 years beyond then, what here in the UK we would call a pub landlord, many of you may know it as a bar manager. And for that reason, with going through what we're going through at the moment in the UK and across the world in hospitality for my former colleagues still in that industry, my heart absolutely goes out to you at this moment. The UK hospitality trade has been ever declining for a long period of time now. So I believe, coming back to reflection, that looking back, resilience was always one of my biggest values and it took a heck of a lot of business resilience to succeed for over 13 years in that industry so it's not a word I would use you know, it's, it's not the kind of word when you're handing someone a pint of Stella and a packet of pork scratchings that you would sort of use a, a term such as resilience but even though it wasn't a word that was included in my vocabulary at the time I do believe looking back that even though it's not a word I would have used. It's not a label I was familiar with at the time. Then even back then, prior to the attack, I was living life with resilience and probably just couldn't have called it that. Great question. Thanks, Namsa.
<laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. And when did you start actually using these words? Was it after the accident? It, it was pretty much straight away after the accident. And I, I am aware now that many people see it as one of those phrases which I would class as being part of lingo bingo. Some people call it BS bingo, but being a, a school speaker among other audiences, I try and keep it as squeaky clean as possible. For me, resilience really does sum up what I speak about. And initially, I was speaking about empathy, which I just touched on as the fourth step in the fourth step process of living with more resilience. And the more I researched it and the more I looked into what it was all about, I realised that whilst empathy is essential, it was just one of the key pillars of resilience and it was actually resilience itself that I was, was all about. So that's why I haven't just been one of those speakers that switches from talking about empathy last year to resilience this year and whatever flavour of the month will be next year. For me, they are very much complementing each other with empathy being one of the the keys that I'd talked about of resilience. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Roger. Uh, I'm going to come to you, Nadia. Uh, has, was resilience always common used word in your vocabulary? <laughs> That's a very interesting question. Uh, and yeah, hell no, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I. <laughs> I, I only st started to become resilient and actually learn about resilience maybe three, four, five years ago, because before I was um, living in the darkness, I could say, and, and I was a, a person actually running away from, from the, the experiences of life, especially the, the one that was that were unpleasant. And actually, I only um, a few years ago learned how to process um, what, what is happening, any traumas, any negative experiences. And, and obviously through that uh, learnings, I, I realized the importance of, of resilience and inner strength. So for me, resilience is inner strength and that's core value of, of my business and me as well. Uh, it's, I don't think uh, you, we can be truly human and, and survive in this world and, and thrive in it if we don't, if we lack that inner strength. And, and unfortunately I can see around a lot, a lot of people lack that inner strength and uh, and they caught up get caught up in uh, in a negative mindset uh, of victimhood basically and when the blame there's so much blame um, in, in the world today politi blaming politicians blaming government breaking blaming men blaming women bl blaming other generations <laughs> and that comes <laughs> definitely yeah exactly that that comes from lack of inner strength, lack of resilience. We live in, in a society, there's a lot of uh, controversy as, that we live in a snowflake society. And that's, that's, that's the side effect of, of developing that inner strength and, and living in an illusion that the, the world is beautiful and there is nothing, shouldn't, nothing negative, nothing bad should be happening. Um, that's why it's, you know, so resilience and inner strength be become very, very important part of my work, of my teachings. And, and I speak because it's, it's, I'm really like fed up looking at people suffering for no reason, basically, because they, they, they cannot process it. They cannot accept it. They cannot uh, kind of handle what, what is happening. Uh, to them and if if uh, people were more resilient if people had that inner strength again the world will be such a beautiful place and and i really wish that uh, every <laughs> every person eventually will, will develop that inner strength so we we don't have to dwell on ridiculous meaningless things that are happening to us and as, as Divian said and, and we focus on a bigger picture on a, on a vision and what because when we do that what you know what our heart really wants to create in this world this little small thing that happens to us today or yesterday is not going to matter and we're just gonna be we'll be able to move on and carry on with our life and and create a beautiful connection with other people and ourselves because that's what resilience does. It really improves, it will improve so many things. And definitely get rid of all these conflicts and division 
that we created between ourselves. Too much competition, definitely too much competition out of insecurities and, and lack of that inner strength. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a very important word in my dictionary since I learned of, of the importance of that inner strength and, and how much difference it makes in my life and in the world in generally. <laughs> So, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Nadia. Thank you so much. I, you know, when you say there's so much competition, uh, we want to compete, like um, Vivian was saying, competition, uh, competing with someone, you're stealing your joy. It's not really necessary to compete because we are, we are different, we're different people and living different lives. So life wouldn't be exciting if we are all doing the same thing. Thank you so much for that. Um, if anyone is watching, you don't need to compete with anyone. You just have to be you. And uh, I remember when I write my social media, if you go and look at my social media, my social media is bonkers. Basically, I just do, I do what I do, which is love but I post things that best come from my heart. And uh, if I if I meet someone, they're like, you know, I feel like I know you. And I'm like, thank you so much. Even the guy, when they were doing the uh, the, the the awards and he was like, your, your, your social media is not posted like it has to, like professional, everything has to be this. And he was like, it's a memory lane. When you go in, you see the memories. When I go to a business event, if I meet you, Nadia, I take a picture and funny picture, I put it there. That's so much fun that we've been having. And that's what I do for me, it's a memory lane. Thank you so much. And David, I'm gonna come to you. What do you what's your intake on this one? Good question. I just want to. I just want to. Yeah, I think there's so much light on this uh, call that the light is consuming me. Can you see it slowly moving across my body? Um, um, so. Um, what are you doing in this side? Your, your your son is hiding you on the picture on the video. <laughs> I know. Like, if I go in the sun, then you can't see me. I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, um, I chose the wrong location. But anyway, I'll move once I've answered the question. Um, so resilience, um, it was never, it was never ever part of my vocabulary. I was, I grew up uh, kind of very um, protected. And so it was more of a case of how do we avoid that? My dad always had this saying, and I think this saying is useful in some scenarios, but as a general rule, just blanket using this saying is not necessarily helpful. And the saying is that um, he, he always used to say, like, if in doubt, leave it out. But the thing is with that, the problem with that is, is um, you mix up doubt with fear. You can very easily mix the two and be like, oh, I'm in doubt because I'm not sure whether it's the right decision for me, or I'm in doubt because I'm in, just purely because I'm in fear of the decision. Um, and you can miss out on a lot of growth and a lot of learning and a lot of joy by avoiding situations and that's basically what I did I did that to for 20 I don't know 25 26 maybe even 27 years of my life before I before I started looking at um what I needed to change to really start to feel real joy and be more resilient but even then I I, I had this journey where I started to understand unconditional love but then I, I kind of shriveled into this place of what I thought was accepting myself but actually I was just surrendering and going uh, well, I'm not going to take any responsibility for my life. I've got it all very mixed up. Really, the word resilience only really came into my vicinity, my kind of thinking, probably in the last couple of years. Although I've been doing it for a while, it was only in the last couple of years that it actually came into my vocabulary. Um, and I started using that word in the last couple of years. Um, I think uh, it's interesting that we don't use the word. It's interesting that we don't teach it. It's interesting that... People want to avoid scenarios and that all comes from our upbringing and it comes from uh, being at school. It comes from every scenario um, and it often comes from the way in which the people who love us put forward a scenario. So if they, they, they got fear about it themselves and, and they share it with us and they go and tell us to do something, but they've got fear within themselves, we're going to kind of take on that fear. And we're not going to be resilient in that in that moment. Um, I think uh, resilience is a really cool word. I really love the word. 
I want to use it more often. And I think it's important that we use the word and we start, you know, maybe, maybe all of us could start a trend and it could be like one of the new cool words, you know, like kids use the word phone. This, they probably don't use the word FOMO anymore. It's probably like five years ago he used it, but I'm old now, so or older. <laughs> so maybe we can start a trend and get kids using the word resilient, but I really think it's something that people need to use. People should use it because we can also develop fear of words, right? It's like, oh, it's scary. If you want to be resilient, it's scary. You know, it's scary to be resilient because I don't know what that looks like. I don't know. I've never experienced it. I've never had to do anything about that um so yeah it's i used to i mean i never had a negative relationship with the word resilient but i never really understood what it meant no one taught me it no one spoke about it no one explored it with me i think it's critical i think it's critical even when we're kids that we explore this word what does it mean to us how does it work how do we become resilient um so that at least at the bare minimum that that is planted in our head we've sown the seed right? I think that's the important bit is that we've got to sow the seed um, so that people have the opportunity to become more resilient. If we don't sow the seed, then they have no option. And I do this often in, in my business is, um, so I've got two businesses. I've got my coaching business, but I've got my, I've got a property business as well. And in that property business, it happens often with tenants in that I know the reason that they're not doing stuff is because they feel fear and for them to become more resilient, they have to become more responsible. And so, for example, uh, when I have tenants who are making up reasons that they can't pay their rent or they're going to be late, which doesn't happen too often, but it happens now and then, you have to put in natural consequences of the late payment charge, and I have to charge it. I don't want to charge it. I'm not, I'm not doing it to make extra money. The real reason I'm doing it is for them to become more responsible, which increases their resilience because they're still alive at the end of it even though money feels tight they're still alive they've still worked through 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 it they've still found a solution and that itself creates more resilience so i absolutely love the word and i think we should use it way more often i think all of us on here should try to stop maybe we can start using the hashtag hashtag resilience from now onwards thank you so much thank you so much uh, uh dima I think you are right, and uh, I'm going to add it to, to our hashtags as well. Thank you for that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's amazing. Thank you so much. I'm going to come to you, Dee. What is your intake on this one? Well, I would say growing up, the word resilience probably wasn't even a word we used. Um, they would just say, get up, get tough, and keep it moving. And was that a good thing? I would say no. No, at some points, but the good part of it, I would say it made you tough. It made you strong. But the negative part of it was it sometimes it made you not feel. If you didn't, we didn't feel some things because you were told to, you end up suppressing it because you were told to be strong. So the word resilience was not even used in my um, growing up. But is it needed? Yes, it's needed because we want to be able to identify even what it is. So let's even identify what it is. What is resilience? It, what it is, instead of just saying, um, be tough and get up and keep moving, like we were told we were younger. So being tough and being strong, yes, but are you identifying with your emotions? Because the emotional part is allowing you to stay human. You know, we're not cold, become a cold person. You know, you, you, you look, so now you become sensitive to someone else that is going through a trauma or going through a situation. You become sensitive. So I would say, yes, it's, this is needed. And no, it was not spoken when I was coming up. It was just told to get up, stay strong, keep moving. You don't have time to cry. You just have a, to keep moving with, with, with your assignment. You know, keep moving to be better. You know, you have a family. You have to go to work. You know, we don't have the time to be sad. We don't have the time to understand our emotions. But now that we are growing and being more developed as an adult, you understand that that word resistance is important because now you know, okay, so I am able to identify. I've had some obstacles. I've had some challenges. Okay, so let, now let's understand what they are. And now that I can understand what they are, I understand what I should be doing to move past it. 
So I think that resilience work is very important and too many times things are brushed under the rug. Things are hidden. Things are not talked about. Things are not even spoken of. So this work it should be spoken to so that everyone can know it. So even when our children go through trauma, they will know how to handle it. So the, the big thing is, is let's have the conversation like we're having now so that someone can know, okay, wait a minute. I did go through some challenges. I am able to bounce back. And now let's go through certain steps to, to do that. So it's okay to talk about it. So I think that these hidden conversations that no one wants to talk about, we should have these conversations more so that everyone can know it's okay to be able to go through challenges and, and overcome them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dia. I always say to my friends, um, I don't like it when they want me to know the good stuff. I need to know, I need to know them well. When they are crying, I need to know they are crying. And that makes me that makes me know that I am a good friend or even a family member because people intend to tell you good stuff. Yes. And that's not that's never a friendship. A friendship is someone that will tell you. When they don't feel good and say, no, sir, I don't feel too good. Or even you, the speakers, I don't want you to, to, to actually wanting me to get to know the, the fancy real you. I don't want, there's nothing, no one has just fancy life. So if you don't feel too good, just say, no, sir, you know what? I'm having a bad day. Just let it right. out there. That, that is a, a strong relationship. And yes. in that relationship, you get to know someone really, really well. Uh, because it's, life is a challenge. There's so many challenges in life. Thank you so much, Dee, for actually um, putting out there that our audience, they don't have to feel good all the time, even if they don't. If you don't feel good, just say it out loud. I don't feel too, too good. So thank you so much. Uh, Roger, now we are come to a closing time. Is there anything you would like to leave with our audience? Any just a word of encouragement, please? Yeah, I think my usual reminder, whether this is done via prayer, meditation, affirmation, or whatever it is, you just need to believe in your mind, heart, and soul. You are more than a survivor. You are a thriver. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You guys are listening. You're more than a survivor. Thank you so much. Nadia, anything you'd like to leave with our audience? Uh, yes, of course. So uh, all I want to say, guys, if, if anything bad is happening in your life, anything negative, you, you're going through some traumas, um, instead of being caught up in your head and emotions uh, that are you know, accompanying that experience, just, just go into your heart and just ask yourself what your best version, strongest version of yourself would do? How would it uh, respond to, to the situation? Would it be dwelling? Would it be creating these negative thoughts? Would it be victim? Would it be gossiping and whatever? Or creating negative opinions about other people and stuff like that. Just, just always ask yourself, ask your heart, what, uh, what, you know, what would the best and strongest version of myself would do in that situation? So yeah, that's, that's, that's my <laughs> ending. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nadia. Our audience, I'm sure they will, you have given me lots of questions. I know I've already got so much homework here to ask about myself. <laughs> I'm going to come to you, uh, Divian. Yeah, so uh, this is a great question to end with. So I'd say um, the number one, the one thing that I really want everybody to know, every single person on this planet, it, is that you're just so deeply loved and worthy just exactly as you are every single hair on your head is accounted for you are accounted for fully you are loved deeply and really your job is to tap into that your job is to figure out how to tap into that so that you know who you are so that you know that you are loved so that you can find happiness and joy and through doing that whether it's the business you want to run, whether you want to start selling, you know, as I help people do, selling high ticket products, whether it's you want to go and run a marathon, whether you, whatever it is you want to achieve and do in life, when you do it from a place of happiness, it's so much easier. 
And so I just want to leave and work on that one thing is just know that you are deeply loved and that love is shown in every single area of your life in small and simple, quiet ways. Whether it's you go for a walk and you see some flowers that you love, um, whether the sun shining on your face, whether it's something that somebody random says to you, that's an expression of love. And um, when you know that deeply, right in your core, you work magic. You will create magic. The miracle, the, the, the unique thing inside you, the thing that you are born to do on this planet, because every single person has something they're born to do on this planet, will come out. And it will come out so magically, so simply, so easily, and you'll be in flow, and you'll love life. And uh, I just want to leave you with that, uh, because it, it's just so important. I posted today, and I said, or yesterday, and I said, um, I can't remember the last time I woke up on a Monday morning dreading Monday morning. Honestly, can't. And it's only because I know I've worked on that. And I, I want to leave you with that. And so um, that's just the most important thing. Thank you so much, Devian. Uh, what you are saying, um, last week, actually, I was like, everyone is so depressed. I went for joking. And then I went out on my way back. So I decided to put the music. So now, because I can't go to the gym and do my my hands, so now when I run, I just I just dance with my with my using um, doing exercises with my arms, and I see people looking at me and they're smiling because I'm happy. So I'm like, I'm just gonna do whatever I want to be happy. <laughs> So I just run back. I run when I'm going. And then when I come back, I, I'm on all, all the way. I'm dancing, basically. So I'm like, what's the heck? Bring it on. I'm going to come to you, Adi. Anything you want to leave with our audience, please? Yes. Uh, Divian touched on something that I wanted to leave with the audience. Um, and it's about love. Last one talk about love. And I think love is a very, is very powerful. Um, I know this is the holiday time. And and COVID is going on and so much is going on in people's lives individually. And maybe they might have even lost someone. So this is their first holiday celebrating them without the loved one. So I want you to know that there's hope, that uh, I love you, um, that God loves you. And, you know, if you need to be around people that want to celebrate you, that's what we're here for. We're here to celebrate you, to lift you up and to encourage them, know that, you know, things will get better day by day, things get better, you know? So let's just connect with people, you know, don't stay in that state. Let's change our state and let's get around people that are, that are love. Like, the, like he said, go for a walk. Cause I do that as well. Go for a walk, enjoy nature. Let's have some gratitude of the things that we do have and we can control and we do have um, connections with. So again, I just want to share some love to everyone and to let them know that, you know, if you need anyone, it's, I celebrate Thanksgiving on, in New York, but if you need someone to kind of connect with, I'm more than happy to hear to share some love with you and celebrate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dee. Like Dee says, we are happy to share some love with you. If you want to get in touch with the, any of the uh, speakers, please get in touch with them through Legacy Wealth, through Ghost Talk Show. Um, uh, my Legacy Wealth Talk is in my head. So I, I put their uh, websites on the banners. You can contact them direct or you can contact them through the talk show. This is their community. This is your community. So you can, whoever you want, you feel I actually connect with this person. Please feel free to get, get in touch with these speakers. They all gone through challenging times and they picked themselves up and they, they are living their lives and now is coronavirus and they are happy to share their love with you guys. So we love you guys. Anything you want, we are here for you. Like D say, like Divian said, and Nadia and Roger, we are all here for you. We'll see you guys tomorrow and God bless you. God bless you.